Uh, hey, yo. Hey, Danny K. Just a minute, chum. Are you addressing me? Yeah, K. I... Oh, you're Austin Wells. <laughs> I mistook you for Danny K. How dare you? <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mr. Wells. I should have known. I just saw your latest picture. Tomorrow's the level. Thank you, but I'm on my way to appear on the Danny K program. Yeah? You're going to think tonight's forever. <laughs> Who are you? I'm an average radio listener. Well, you look older than 12. <laughs> but tell me, my Vox Popoff, I haven't heard any of Mr. K's programs this year. What does he do? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> All I know is he has one joke. My sister married an Irishman O'Reilly, no O'Reilly. You'll find out. Now, just a minute, my killer cycle killjoy. To my way of thinking, Mr. K is a very fine artist. To my way of thinking, your way of thinking is no way of thinking. <laughs> but, uh, well, maybe you can teach him a thing or... Or two. No, uh, just one. We don't want to burden him. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor... I'm here tonight because Mr. K is leaving for Hollywood tomorrow And I'm going to give him a few pointers about making the proper social contacts in Hollywood Oh, how to make friends with influential people? Correct <laughs> Hollywood is a community of primary impressions Where an individual is categorized by his initial impingement upon the consciousness of any social orbit Ha, <laughs> you're just saying that <laughs> But what does it mean? Who knows? But didn't I read it beautifully? <laughs> well, excuse me now. Mr. K's program is about to go on the air. Oh, yeah. Glad you reminded me. I got to run home and turn off my radio. So long, chum. That blue ribbon, oh, that blue ribbon, dear. That blue ribbon, oh, that blue ribbon, dear. It's splendid. Splendid. Your search for the very best is then there When you call for fast food Thirty-three fine blues Blended into one great beer Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dick Joy introducing the Danny K Show presented by Pabst Blue Ribbon with Butterfly McQueen, Dave Terry and his orchestra and our special guests tonight, Orson Welles and her nib, Miss Georgia Gibbs. And here's the star of our show. Danny Kay! Wait a minute, wait a minute, Danny. Would you mind repeating what you just did? Oh, hello, Orson. Well, Austin, I'm certainly glad... Never you... mind that. What was that you just did into the microphone? <laughs> what, you mean my scat song? Cat song? Yes. That's my signature. Well, your handwriting is awful. <laughs> Can you do that again, but slowly this time? Be very happy to. Git cat giddle. I see. I see. Go on. Giddly app giddly tummy. Oh, oh, is that so? Riddly biddly roop. Well, that sounds reasonable. Greek fata. Oh, she did, huh? <laughs> Skiddly doo Oh, her husband. And suddenly, huh? Fiddly water reap. Well, I don't blame her. Of course not, Orson. What else could he do? How long were they married, Danny? They weren't married at all. They weren't? Oh, then you're reading that wrong. Oh. It should go like this. Git gat skittle the app, riddle the tummy. What? Riddle the biddle the roof. Sorry, patan. Skittle the what up? Skittle the wooda. Jump. Reap. Now. Danny, what else goes on here on this merry half hour of fun, frolic, and frivolity? Well, you know, Orson, the usual radio program. Oh, that bad, hmm? <laughs> What do you mean, bad? We have music, songs, jokes, and once we got a laugh. Your suspenders broke? Yes. <laughs> no, no! <laughs> we told a joke. Oh, that's the joke I've been hearing about. How does it go again? Well, it's a very simple joke, Orson. Gets a very big laugh. Here, I'll do it with you. Orsa, my sister married an Irishman. Is that so? No, O'Reilly. <laughs> That's uh, a joke. 
Well, something went wrong here. Danny, Danny, you're about to go to Hollywood. If you tell that joke out there, you wind up no place. Oh, really? No oblivion. <laughs> That's funny. You get a laugh with it, and I can't. Danny, if you insist on telling that O'Reilly joke, it should be presented in a super colossal Hollywood production. Mm -hmm. It should be given the famous Orson Welles cut. The Orson Welles cut? <laughs> What's that? I'll show you. Now, who can we get to play the part of a girl? Mm, well, how about a girl? That's typecasting. <laughs> but get her. Who's she? Oh, her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. Oh. Hi, Georgia, honey. You're about to be honored with a role in a production directed with that famous Orson Welles touch. You uh, know Orson, of course. How do you do, Miss Gibbs? Hello, Mr. Gibbs. Okay. Well, come on, Orson. If you're going to give any joke this Hollywood production, let's get going. Not so fast, Daniel. You don't attempt a stupendous undertaking such as this super colossal breathtaking spectacle without time, research, preparation. I'll need at least two minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> By an odd turn of fate, that's just the length of George's number. <laughs> Sing it, Miss Gates. <laughs> I took a choo 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 as fast as I could take a choo choo. I come along, long, long, long way to take you in my arms. And I was your first clues to prove that you've been through. Come to say, baby, you've been away, way, 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 way beyond the blue horizon. I'm hoping no, 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 no one else is on your mind. So buckle up, my sweet, meet your Waterloo. Don't you, baby? Stop me from guessing. Ain't no time to see. Stop all this messing. Put your bank of baby at ease. I wanna love, love, love you Just the way I wanna love you I'm gonna try, try, try to try To make you understand When all this said and done The one for me is you Don't you, baby Stop me from guessing Ain't no time to see ah, All this mess is Put your bag of baby at ease I want to love, love, love you Just the way I want to love you I'm gonna try, try, try To try to make you understand When all this said and done The one for me is you Places, please. Speaking of places, Mr. Wells, you'll find more places serving Pat Blue Ribbon. Just a moment. <laughs> Danny, who is this undernourished, over-anxious young man? <laughs> speak up. Oh, but Mr. Wells, you don't just speak up with a commercial, you kind of sneak up on it. Sneak? What's the matter? What are you selling? Uh, Pat's Blue Ribbon Beer. Well, then come right out with it. Say it. Okay. Pat's Blue Ribbon Beer. <clears throat> there, I said it. <laughs> now... Don't you feel better, young man? <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. Wells, but I'd feel much better right now if I had a good thick hamburger sandwich and a tall, sparkling glass of Pabst Blue Ribbon. There's a real production. Juicy, top-round hamburger broiled to perfection with a dash of ketchup on a big toasted roll and that Pabst Blue Ribbon. You see, Pabst Blue Ribbon just naturally adds to the good taste of any food. For well, this truly great beer is full flavor blended. Yes, Thirty-three fine brews merge their individual goodness to give you that top-of-the-world taste of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. Ah, but words fail me. You tell them, kids. Thirty-three fine brews blended into one great beer. Thirty-three fine brews blended into one great beer. 
Well done, my boy. You have a commercial. Don't be coy about it. Now, Danny, let's go on to the production. Places, everybody. Mr. Terry, fanfare. <laughs> Orson Welles presents The Wife of O'Reilly. Adapted from the joke on the Danny K program, based upon a joke used by Fred Allen, suggested by a joke on the Jimmy Durante show from an original joke told on the Jack Carson broadcast, stolen from an old Buster Keaton movie. Hello, Mr. K. Well, it's Butterfly McQueen. Come on in, Miss McQueen. What are all these interruptions? Oh, it's Mrs. Butterfly McQueen, president of the Danny K. Fan Club. Uh, we're just in time, Miss McQueen. Take your place. You might as well be in this production, too. What's going on, Mr. K.? Well, Mr. Wells is going to stage a big Hollywood production here. You know who Mr. Wells is. The young actor, writer, producer who set the American theater on fire. That's Orson. I thought... I thought that was Orson. <laughs> You've seen his pictures, haven't you? He writes, directs, produces, and stars himself in them. Oh, that's nice. Then he can't possibly blame anybody but himself. <laughs> oh, no? How about that developing fluid? Well, we're wasting time on with the production. Oh, yeah. You <clears throat> see, Mr. Wells is preparing me for Hollywood. Uh, I'm going out to California next week. Oh, California's a wonderful place to live. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're an orange. <laughs> Right, Mr. But, Mr. Kay, what will happen to me if you go to Hollywood? Well, I don't know, Butterfly. Would you like to come along and be my social secretary? What will I have to do? Well, the first thing every morning, you run through my mail. Before I put on my shoes? <laughs> After. How's your shorthand? Well, I never measured them, but I think they're both the same length. No, 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 no. I mean, how are you on dictation? I'm against it. We fought a war to get rid of them. <laughs> this routine is going to make the O'Reilly joke seem like a classical gem. Now, let's get on with our production. Places, stand by. Music! <laughs> The Columbia Sweatshop presents The Wife of O'Reilly, or The Frowning Irishman. Written, produced, and directed by Orson Welles, and starring Danny Kaye in a very small part. I barely made it. My name is O'Reilly. Timothy O'Reilly. Timothy J. O'Reilly. <laughs> My forefathers before me were named O'Reilly. My name is O'Reilly. My name is O'Reilly. My name is O'Reilly. My name is O'Reilly? <laughs> <laughs> for centuries, for centuries, the name O'Reilly... <laughs> For centuries, the name O'Reilly has been synonymous with the name O'Reilly. For generations, the O'Reillys have populated this little fishing town on the coast of Ireland, longitude 6 degrees west, latitude 55 degrees north, dealing zero. Life in our village was simple, simple people, simple homes, simple food, simply awful. Simple people, simple people. I am a simple fisherman. I am a simple housewife. I am simple. <laughs> when do I come in? Yes, yes, life flowed gently past us. Life was good. Then, one day, from far off England, there came into our peaceful village a strange, mysterious couple. Our simple people were mystified. I am mystified. I am mystified. I am Miss McQueen. <laughs> When do I come in? They were a handsome pair, brother and sister. One was a blonde, an exotic creature with hair of gossamer gold. Gee, thanks. My sister is cute, too, huh? Our simple, gentle people had never beheld such delicate loveliness as that of Caroline Miller, Caroline Blessed Name. She lived with her brother in the thatch-covered cottage 
in the thatch-covered cottage at the end of the lane. <laughs> they were seen but seldom by the townsfolk. One day in the marketplace, I saw her coming towards me. I lifted my hat. Good morning, Miss Miller. My name is O'Reilly. Oh, really? <laughs> she was gone. I hoped I might chance upon her brother, Joseph. Maybe through him I might meet this wondrous vision of delight. And then one day in the marketplace, striding toward me came Joseph. I lifted my hat. Good morning, sir. My name is O'Reilly. Oh, really? <laughs> he was gone. It's a fine part I've got here. Suddenly he turned and came back. Oh, I'm back in again. He approached and spoke to me. What did you say your name is? O'Reilly. Oh, really? You're just the man I'm looking for. I want you to meet my sister. I'll arrange it. Goodbye. He was gone in a trice. Convertible trice. <laughs> but days went by and neither Joseph nor Carolyn Miller emerged from their thatch covered cottage. And the simple, gentle people of our town wondered, who are these two? What do they want? Why did they come here? Who are these two? What do they want? Why did they come here? I just said that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me, too. You didn't say anything. I know. I'm just polite. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the thatch covered cottage at the end of the lane, Caroline Miller and her brother Joseph were seated at dinner. They were having words. I uh, have uh, some more alphabet soup, Joseph. No, and stop putting words in my mouth. <laughs> Joseph, must we go on like this forever? You've hardly spoken to me for days. Are you worried about the book you're writing? Of course, my book. If it weren't for you, I'd have finished writing it. Me? What have I done? It's what you haven't done. Why won't you marry this man O'Reilly? He's the most successful fisherman in the village. Only this morning his boat came in loaded with mackerel, cod, and smelt to high heaven. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't love him, Joseph. Carolyn Miller, do you realize what the men in the marketplace are saying? They're saying that a beautiful girl like you can have a husband. Oh, Joseph, they are not. Yes, they are. I heard them this morning when you passed. They all said, a hubby, 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 hubby. <laughs> well, Joseph, Joseph was right, but not only the men were talking, the women as well. A pretty girl like that. Why doesn't she get married? Yes, why doesn't she get married? Yes, why doesn't she get married? Nobody worries about me getting married. <laughs> Carolyn, please, for my sake, for the sake of my book, marry him. Just this once. I promise you the greatest wedding a girl ever had. Well, Joseph, if it means so much to you, I will. You will? Oh, good. I'll get McNamara's band. Oh, what a wedding there'll be. What a time we'll have. Oh, his name is McNamara. He's the leader of the band. Although they're few in numbers, they're the finest in the land. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away. The cards they pump the old balloon while I have the pipes to play. And the Hennessy, Tennessee tootles the flute and the music is something grand. A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band. Oh, there's Brannigan, Flanagan, Harrigan, Hannigan, Shaughnessy, and O'Toole. McCafferty, Rafferty, Darity, Flaherty, Slaherty, and O'Toole. Oh, Brady, O'Brien, O'Reilly, O'Ryan, Maloney, Mahoney, McCann. O'Donnell, O'Connell, O'Farrell, O'Carroll, O'Shamus, O'Horan, O'Farrell, the Badge, O'Ratty, the Cassidy, the Flotted, and Blatted, and Flotted, and Blatted, and Flatted, and Flair, and Flatted, and Flatted, and the second. In McNamara! McQueen. Now, at last, I can finish my book. Let me see. My sister married an Irishman. Oh, really? No, O'Reilly. Signed, Joe Miller. There you are, Danny. There's your joke for the Hollywood production. Well, okay, Orson, but turn about fair play. You once did a drama called Julius Caesar. I did. I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, you did. Well, I'd like to show you how I produced it. You? Well, you made a production out of my joke. So now you want to make a joke out of my production. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a Hollywood musical production. My name is Julius Caesar, 
Or call me Julius. Coffee, cat. That's not the way Julius Caesar opens. Well, how does it begin? Well, the action Julius Caesar opens on a street in Rome where a group of citizens and trade people is gathered to welcome Caesar as talk. Now, stop right there. In the opening of a musical picture, nobody talks. No? No, no. Everybody sings. Well, what do they sing? Anything, as long as it's an opening chorus. Now, we'll make one up right here. A little opening fanfare, if you please, David. <laughs> When it's cherry blossom time in Orange, New Jersey, it's middle of summer in Rome. So we say, hoo 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 who, why, none other than the noblest grower of them all, you and You your... mean that master tradesman, president of the ice cream manufacturer's guild? No, no, that's Julius Freezer. <laughs> well, is it then that master needle worker and head tailor? No, no, that's Julius Scissor. <laughs> well, then, uh... here comes Caesar again. Oh, you at this point in the original, Caesar enters in a chariot drawn by four white horses. Well, that's definitely a part for a great western star, a real man of the people. That's for you, Orson. You make your entrance, dragging your saddle behind you, and you sing... I'm a cowboy from the Asian prairie, pleurobus unum, and old Roman in the slow I never want to fool you, I don't even want to rule you, so whenever you want to talk to me, Pluribus Unum, step right up, shake my hand, call me Junior. Yippee-yay, yippee-yay, After his entrance, Caesar betrays his anxiety by saying to Mark Antony, Let me have men about me that are fat, fleek headed men, and such as sleep o' night. Young Cassius has a lean and hungry look. What a part for Sinatra! <laughs> if you don't see me each day, you're lucky. Life without me can be so ducky. Our love could take the place of cashes with a hungry face. Well, what was he so worried about, Orson? Didn't he have a friend in the whole place? Oh, yes, that was Mark Anthony. He's his close friend and confidant with whom he discussed all his programs. What did you... Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> what did you say his name was? Mark Anthony. Anthony, huh? Anthony well, I got it. Scene open. Caesar knocks on the door. Come in. Is this the house of Mark Anthony? Yeah. Well, Mr. Anthony, I have a problem. <laughs> well, Cassius knows what Cassius. He said tweezers try to please us. So to tennis went to Sinner's house, and Sinner went to pieces. Now Cork is very cautious. He said Caesar tried to squeeze her. So to Candle took a sandal and hit Caesar in the beezer. So what I want to know is. If juices the shoemaker won't give his all, a true candle has no one to cobble him. His sandals will wobble him, and if they trouble him, Mr. Anthony, what is my problem? No name. No problem. Oh, but Mr. Anthony, I've got a problem. Who is young, Carter? It is I, Dick Joyous. I've got to get a commercial in here. That's quite a problem. Oh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. For no matter where you go, there is no finer beerus than Paptus Blue Ribbonus. 33 fine fruit, Then what happened? Well, then comes the famous scene in the Roman Senate. A scene in the Senate? Well, how will we do it, Austin? Leave it to me. Scene opens, lights, action, crowd noises, rapid gavel. Be our hands the floor. The chair recognizes the senator from the south of Rome, Gilius Buster. <laughs> Friends, Romans, and fellow senators, lend me your ears. I won't need it very long. <laughs> <laughs> 
Four or five weeks just till I finish this uh, filibuster. Do you know the man who says, call me Julius? His name is not Julius Caesar. It happens to be Flavius Ecchi Pliny Caesar. And fellow Romans are come not to praise Flavius Ecchi Pliny Caesar, but to bury this F.E.P. Caesar. <laughs> and I say to you, I say to you, as long as Caesar remains in power, there'll be price stealing on slaves, the pirates, even the very toga we wear. That's a cloak, son. <laughs> well, there's only one thing wrong with this picture, Danny, among other things. If you don't actually have Caesar killed in the Senate, you'll lose the most famous line in the play. So what is that? When the hapless Caesar is foully stabbed, he turns his reproachful eye on his faithful friend Brutus and says, Et tu, Brutus. That's the most famous line. <laughs> Well, then it's got to be the top song in the picture. As this is a comedy, Orson, it's got to be sung by the comedy team. I'm Cassius. I'm Brutus. We're on the radio. I'm Brutus. I'm Cassius. Hello, hello, hello. hello. I'm the potatoes busy bee. You know how bad the food is. I'll never go back there again. I know. I et too, Brutus. <laughs> Do you realize we've just spent three million dollars on a picture with no love interest? Didn't Caesar have a girl? Yes, he had a wife who figured very largely in the play Calpurnia. Calpurnia? Mm. That's a great thing. In fact, you see it all now. After leaving the Senate, Caesar travels down the dusty road, dragging his horse behind him, opens the ranch gate, sees Calpurnia, and sings... California, here I come, right back where I started from. That is where we started, where the curtain really parted, and my friend, this is the end. This is the only picture that ends in the middle for the benefit of the people who came in in the middle. This, this, this. Orson, thanks for being here tonight and for all the advice about Hollywood. Think nothing of it, Danny. Good luck on your trip. And I'll say, by the way, uh, Danny, how about renting me your apartment here in New York while you're gone? Renting it? Well, it's ten rooms, Orson. It's a beautiful apartment. How much rent would you pay? Well, I'll give you the ceiling price. No more. Oh, really? No, OPA. <laughs> Again, the makers of Pat's Blue Ribbon wish to remind you that no matter how severe may be the government restrictions on grain, however much Pat must curtail its output to protect quality, every bottle of Pat's Blue Ribbon you buy will continue to live up to its name. There'll be no cutting corners, no lowering of standards of flavor and goodness, no compromise with quality. The Danny K Show will come to you a half hour earlier beginning next Friday. Our guests will be Peter Laurie and her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. This program was brought to you by the Paps Growing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Remember, the war is not over for the American Red Cross. Our boys in foreign theaters, our hospitalized fighting men and veterans still need the aid which your contribution to the 1946 drive will help the Red Cross to deliver. So give from the heart. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.